Hi, my name is Dong. I am a Canadian animator working in Japan. And working in the Japanese animation industry, it is inevitable that you will be animating some action scenes with characters fighting each other with everything from fists to magical swords and other wacky things as they go through their character arcs. I like to go through some of my old animation and show you how I approach these kind of scenes. Here is a scene from the Decadence anime I worked on. <laughs> Here, Natsume is fist fighting the big bad villain as she rushes forward and engages him in fisticuffs. There are three parts of throwing a punch the anticipation or wind up, the forward moving punch itself, and lastly, the follow through. I always think that you should use real life as reference, so let's study this clip of some boxing. The boxer here will hit his opponent with a left hook. Before he starts the punch, he winds up his left fist. And scrubbing through, you can see how he pulls his arm back in anticipation of punching forward. Throughout all this, his whole body is moving forward even though his left arm is still pulling backwards. At a certain point, his left fist flies forward as his body turns to the right. His right arm, which started being in front, now pulls backwards. The force of the boxer's body moving forward, the turning of his body, all adds to the force of that punch once it is thrown. Once the punch connects, the boxer follows through as his arms bounce back a bit and deflects off as he recovers. We also see the result of his punch, mainly his opponent reeling in pain. As artists, we want to take this and really exaggerate it with both timing and posing. In the same way movie fight scenes look way cooler than real fights, we want to strive beyond reality. We want to sell that wind up or anticipation motion to give the resulting punch more force. A slow, powerful punch gets dodged easily in real life, but looks great on the screen. As Natsume pulls her arm back, we really hold on that pose with her right arm back even as she is moving forward. Check out how many frames are dedicated to her having her punching arm back and behind her. Her fist lags behind her body for the duration of the scene, and pretty much this whole scene is dedicated to just selling the wind up of her punch. Throughout this, we are looking for ways to draw strong poses. I really like this drawing with Natsume's strong expression and her fist both in frame. It makes her intention crystal clear. Posing itself is another whole video series, but always look for opportunities to make strong dynamic poses. We want to exaggerate the speed of the punch, so check out the distance between these two drawings. Damn, that's fast. Natsume's opponent deflects his punch and Look how much he moves with just two drawings. He moves so fast that we need to add a smear to link up the motion. Natsume getting deflected is going to be our follow through and we really want to exaggerate and sell it to show the result of that exchange. Their punches were fast because we want the audience to feel it and not see it. But we want the follow through to be very clear so that the audience can understand the impact of the attack. We ease into Natsume losing her balance for a few drawings before she winds up to do a spin kick. Again, for this, let's take a look at reference. This is a Taekwondo practitioner doing a spin kick. When he winds up to do the kick, he leads with the shoulder and head and the kicking leg follows. So you can see how the shoulder and head are facing the opponent while the kicking leg lags behind. So let's do that in our animation. We'll have the shoulder lead and again, notice how long this wind up is. I like this pose here. The twist of the body, the expression, and its dynamism contributes to the movement. The actual kick is only two drawings, and speaking of the pose, look at how straight her leg is to deliver maximum force. The distance moved in that one drawing is so huge that I will need to make it a smear drawing. Again, when she gets parried, we ease in to show the aftermath of that exchange. To make sure the viewer really understood that Natsumi got hit, we dedicate plenty of frames to sell the action. Here, it's almost going to slow motion. Next, let's take a look at one of my scenes on Dr. Stone. This is one of my earlier works and I only did the rough animation and layout, but I think it's still good for study. This is one of the fights between Tsukasa and Hyoga. We see the same elements, the long wind up combined with the clear pose to sell the action, with the actual punch being exaggerated to be really fast to give a sensation of force. There are a couple drawings here that are only exposed for a single frame. This drawing, especially, where Tsukasa literally punches you in the face, is meant to be felt, not seen. 
And again, we ease into the follow through as Takasa recovers after the punch connects. The large amount of frames given to the wind up, or anticipation, and the follow through allows us to be set up and prepared for the attack, and gives us time to digest what we saw after. Like with decadence, posing is important. A strong pose is dynamic, meaning there is a sense of movement and has to be clear. Look at this pose. Tsukasa's expression and his fists are both in frame, and I think this makes his intention very clear. We should also look for strong lines of action and for ways to exaggerate things. In this drawing, look at how straight the arms are and how powerful the pose feels. And that's it. Those are some of my thoughts. What do you guys think? Do you guys have some tips? What's your favorite fight scene? Anyways, check out my social media and big thanks to everyone supporting the channel on Patreon. If you would like to help the channel, links are down below. Have a good one.